Hello, I'm Steve Pollack with the Black Swamp Bird Observatory here at the magnificent McGee Marsh on Lake Erie's southwest shore. I'll be your guide on a journey into the fascinating world of bird migrations and the birding fans that migrate with them. Hundreds of thousands of neotropical songbirds, scores of species, funnel right through here each spring after wintering anywhere from the Bahamas to Argentina. They stop here to rest and refuel before taking on the Herculean overflight of Lake Erie to nesting grounds in the upper United States and Canada. Black Swamp Bird Observatory sets the annual biggest week in American birding right at the peak of migration in early May. More than 75,000 birding fans flock here from more than 20 countries for the celebration. So relax and enjoy the journey on Flight Path. Birds have no boundaries. They have this amazing ability to fly, and in many cases, some of them fly incredibly long distances to places that have different habitats, have different surroundings, uh, and there are different species there. And it's this incredible feat that this little five gram bird can do, span thousands of miles every year, uh, and uh, end up in these new places. Migration uh, is a very important phenomenon. For example, the hawk migration, that they travel all the way from North America all the way down to Chile. I feel like, you know, we, we are not, it's not like this our birds, you bird, it's, it's our, you know, it's, it's everybody. Like I, coming here to Midi Marsh, you see a bay-breasted warbler that I see in Panama. You know, those birds belong to all this forest. They know that this is a place they could leave. You know, you know, this is not like home or, you know, everywhere they go, it should be an area that they should be able to enjoy and should be protected. Conservation is a very important uh, key to success to keep doing this. We need to preserve the habitat. Our forest that used to be, area that used to be with beautiful forest, a nice river that have been logged, the rivers are dry and people are having trouble getting the water now. So when we think of terms of what it is about birds and birding that appeals to people, I think the first things we think of are the fact that birds are beautiful, they're colorful, they sing amazing songs. But the things that we don't think about first, the more practical things, are the fact that birds perform really important ecosystem services. They pollinate some plants. They keep the balance of insects intact. They distribute seeds. So if, it, if we don't conserve habitat for birds, it will have direct impact on people as well. If you protect these wild areas, the, the birds keep coming here. Not just birds, but all the wildlife and, and the ecosystems. If they're strong, then all the stuff keeps coming here, which draws all of us here, and all of us have a significant amount of money to spend in this in this area. I think the environmental state of the world right now is in such it's not doing so good. I think that it's I think it's awesome that businesses take advantage of birders. Local businesses might never have thought that protecting these wild areas would turn into dollars in their pockets, but really it does. You can see a direct line between conservation and local businesses thriving. I think it's very important. If we were able to unite people around birds, you know, and you think about um, when you're out there on the boardwalk or on a trail somewhere, you're not necessarily asking someone. You may find out what their ideas are about other things in life, but then you can always fall back to the common love, birds. It's, it's about birds, but it's about people who love birds. See, we're getting to see how birdy it gets right here? This is good. Now it's just, just <laughs> Now I'm gonna start freaking out. <laughs> oh my God, this is bananas. Dentist and his 1,000th bird is a cavity nester. Yeah. But I'm Is this the coolest thing or what? Now imagine how close we can see birds. Yeah, absolutely, you can each have a turn. Spectacle owls seem to be pretty adventurous in how far they go from the nest. They're too cute for this world. They're pretty cute. <laughs> you know, I don't know why people think birders are nerds. I, don't, I mean, I don't like really get it, right? <laughs> Bird is a verb. We've changed it. It's, you know, it's a noun, it's a verb. We can use it however we want. With so many 
amazing photos and stories of travel and adventure, birding and going out looking for moths at night and looking for snakes. I think it's appealing to people with a sense of adventure. Social media and eBird really started to change how this worked. You know, the idea of a rare bird alert was that there was a phone number that you called into and once a week it would be updated with what rare birds had been seen. The ability to immediately go online, no matter where you're going in the world, and study for trips and know what's around immediately, it makes all the difference in the world. It can be you sitting at home in your comfortable chair having a cup of coffee and looking at a bird at a feeder out your window. It can be traveling through Panama through a, for four hours through a steaming jungle to see one bird. Any way that you want to look at birds, it's okay as long as you at some level do something to conserve habitat and do something good for birds in return, then I, however you want to look at birds is A-OK -okay with me. Birds embody what's best in the human spirit, and so freedom and choice and beauty, I don't think you can get any better than that. And so for me, it's um, they, they wrap all of that in, in, in feathered form. We couldn't have said that better. To learn more about the world of birding, join us on the web and stay tuned for more Flight Path.